So in this lesson, we're going to study how to create a site analysis for your specific site. So this is done before you design because it's important for you to relate your architecture to the existing surrounding areas. So this is the final drawing that I've done, but it went through processes before I was able to do this final drawing. So the first thing that I did for, for this, take a satellite view from Google Maps and make sure that you screenshot with the scale bar from Google Maps that you can see here. Now, one important thing that you need to do is to, when you're printing this out, is to shrink to print. Because if you don't do that, the scale bar is going to be cut out. This is the first printout I did. I forgot to shrink to print and therefore it's not visible here. Another thing that you need to do is to zoom in the, your screenshot and make sure that the scale bar is also included. So this is very important because if you do not have any site survey, topography, or measurements, you can, you can quickly initially use this as a basis for knowing the size of the lot. So you, your assumptions would still be correct. So I use this printout to first initially draw in this initial site analysis. But before that, of course, you need to know what information that you need to be gathering and how to symbolize them in graphical form. So here is some of the main things of uh, the information that was being gathered. For example, uh, you need to draw your property line by using this sort of line type or line style, which has a long line with two short dashes to differentiate this line from the rest as property line. And then of course the wind are normally here in the Philippines, which are the northeast and southeast monsoon winds. Utilities, uh, if you gather them, like for example, power lines, sun paths, of course, this is very important. Uh, you could go over to the internet and find out the sun path for this particular location. You can see here I've drawn in what is the summertime sun path from the sunrise to the sunset. And during the December or winter time, this is the sun path, which is more to the south. Noise is symbolized by having these zigzaggy types of lines. So the bigger, the louder the uh, noise in that area, it's symbolized with a bigger type of zigzag. A smaller for, for lesser noise, it will be symbolized with a shorter type of wave. The drainage is symbolized by arrows and annotated as such with drainage. Now, this corresponds to, say, the contour. Okay, contour lines are with hidden lines and written annotations like the heights relative to the street. Of course, existing man-made features like the neighboring houses or existing firewalls could also be there. Like sidewalks, for example, you could annotate them, what these things are in your line drawings. Arrow symbols are different in every style. For example, these, this is the style that is used for, say, the pedestrian traffic or pedestrian circulation. So a bigger arrow would symbolize a more heavier pedestrian flow. A, a smaller arrow would symbolize lighter pedestrian traffic. Also for vehicle traffic or circulation, you could do this for let's say if these symbolize two-way streets the heavier the arrows would symbolize heavier traffic the more lighter the arrows would symbolize moderate traffic now you can also take note of the negative and the positive views from your side say if there are parks and trees in your in that view in that side of the lot it could be more positive if there's an ugly house trash collecting uh, area that would be a negative. So you could do this, do, do this first to get yourself familiar with what the symbols are and how, uh, what, what the information that you're trying to gather and how to symbolize it graphically. So back to what was I was trying to do here. So this is the initial, very rough. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're, this is a bit messy. You can make corrections here. You could, but try to put an effort in, in making it neat 
as, as much as possible and understandable for you and a bit organized so that when you trace over to a next layer it's easier for you to read it here i did this but um i can understand this myself and as 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 the one who did this but the information here was was too dense for anyone to actually understand it so that after i finished this i it took a look and it's like a bit uh I'm, I'm i'm not so i'm not so happy with these types of arrows and then the site analysis uh text should have been on the lower part because when we're doing such things like uh, architectural drawings the title of the drawing should be always on the lower part so i made a final iteration which is a third one which is cleaner and like I moved out certain things like say the wind direction to be outside the north symbol or north orientation symbol on here i am not filling in uh, the arrows with black fills uh, rather i use a warm gray marker so it's easier on the eyes i, I also use that gray marker to emphasize the where the lot is and instead of dimensioning the lot i annotated it right here and placing an arrow onto the property for more information on how to do this you can actually go through edward white's literature on site analysis so he gives an ex some examples here of of, of really how to symbolize and graphically represent so this is not really a co very complete site analysis things like the utilities i have not placed here and water pipelines for example which i do not know, have that information here so therefore i did not was not able to place in anyway this is just basic site analysis for the lot and eventually of course these are important this is how you would be formulating your design responses based on this information very specific to your site so later on you will say if you know where the winds are how would you respond with the structure that you're going to be designing also stuff like rainfall could be added in information and how you would be designing your roof that's important and things like drainage trees of course and how are you going to be responding to the existing trees or planting new trees or transplanting them so that would be the next step design responses so this is the most basic first thing that you do before designing. Anyway, that ends our this very short lecture on how to create a site analysis and how to represent them graphically and what sort of things that you need to place in on your site analysis diagram. Thank you.